Hi, welcome to Dark Dragon Does Math. Um, this is kind of a new concept that I'm doing, and, and I'm, is, I'm just basically calling it homework help. Um, there's three questions that I've seen students struggle with over and over again on our Chapter 8.2 homework. So I'm going to go over those three specific questions. Um, and hopefully by me recording myself going over them, you'll learn something, you'll recognize how to do it, um, and you'll be better for it. So those three questions are number eight, uh, eight, ten, no, 8, 9, and 11. So I'm going to do number 8 first. So it's not super clear. Um, so number 8. So you need to follow along. You need to have your book open uh, because I'm not going to project that. But it's uh, Miss Lavender bought a cylinder, cylindrical lampshade with a height of 14 inches and diameter of 10 inches. So basically, she bought a cylinder. That has a height of 14 and a diameter, which is all the way across, of 10. Now these are in inches. And um, we want to know what the surface area is. Now the other thing we need to know is that it's actually open on the top and bottom. So anytime you do a cylinder that has no top and has no top bottom, we've been doing what's called the, what I call the kerfus, right? And it, which is the curved surface. So <clears throat> put that in parentheses. So you know that's not a real word. Um, the kerfus formula is um, two pi r times h. Now where that comes from is if I were to split this in half right here and lay it out as a rectangle this is still going to be 14 which is the height this length right here is the circumference of the circle okay so that is 2 pi times r um, so I guess height and 2 pi times r now the radius is actually 5 because it gives us that the diameter is equal to 10. And remember that the radius is always equal to half. So the radius here is 5 and the height is equal to 14. So this length right here is 2 times pi times uh, 5. So the area of this rectangle is length, time, or length times width, so 2 pi 5 times 14 or basically 2 pi r h. Really, if we just understand that, if we just understand the formula, we can say, all right, 2 is obviously 2. Pi, that's 3.14. R, that was 5. And H, that was 14. <clears throat> we throw all those through our calculating machine of a jigger 2 times 3.14 times 5 times 14 gives us 439.6 um, the only thing we need is the fact that it is inches and since we found surface area it is inches squared <clears throat> so that's number 8 number Nine. So we start out, it says the volume of a cylinder is 121 pi cubic inches. So the volume of a cylinder is 121 pi. And its height is 4 inches. Those are the two things it gives us. What is the radius of the cylinder? So since it gave you a total, which is volume, we're going to have to use the volume equation. V is equal to pi r squared times h. And so we know volume is 121 pi. We know pi is pi. I'm actually going to leave it as pi. As, and the reason I'm leaving it as the, the symbol pi is because this was left as a symbol pi. I'm going to do this in an alternate way in just a moment. Um, that might be helpful too. We don't know r squared, so that's just going to remain r squared. And we know h is 4. So I'm going to take 
So the only variable I have is the variable that I'm going to be looking for is r squared. So I'm actually going to take everything that is not r squared and I want to get rid of it. So I do that by dividing. I'll divide by pi and I'll divide by 4. Now these are technically multiplying each other. So the pi is going to cancel out with the pi and the 4 is going to cancel out with the 4. And over here I'm left with r squared. On this side, whatever I do to one side of an equation, I do to the other. So I'm also going to divide by 4 pi. And something that's neat is those pi's cancel out. So really all I'm doing is doing 21 divided by 4. Now, I like fractions, so I'm going to leave it as the second way I do it. I'll do it all in decimals. Um, but I'm going to leave it as a fraction. So now I want to take the square root. Because this is r squared. To solve it, I have to take the square root of both sides. Okay, when I take the square root, technically what I've been telling you guys is to do r squared to the power of one half. So those will cancel out the twos and I'll be left with r. So 121, square root of 121 over 4. Now I can do this without a calculator. I can do this without a calculator because I know that the square root of 121 is 11. And I know the square root of 4 is 2. And so r is equal to 11 over 2, which is 5.5. .5, and it is in inches. <clears throat> so that's one way. We do it a second way. Same idea. 121 pi is equal to pi times r squared times 4. So this time, I'm going to change everything into decimals. So I'm going to do 121 times 3.14. And on this side, I'm going to say 4 times 3.14 times r squared. And I'm basically going to figure out what these numbers are right here. All right. 121 pi, well, 121 times 3.14 is 379.94 equal to 4 times 3.14. 12.56 r squared and so this time I still want to get r squared alone but it might be more obvious what I do I'm going to divide by 12.56 divide by 12.56 and when I do that I'm going to say 379.94 divided by 12.5 oops 0.56 and it's going to give me 30.25 over here those cancel out is equal to r squared. I'm still going to set to the power of one half. Set to the power of one half. So I get r is equal to 30.25 caret to the power of one half. And I get 5.5. .5. So I really don't care whichever one of those made more sense to you. But that's how you do it. Two different ways. One where I keep it in terms of pi. This is actually the way I prefer it. But I realize that frac uh, decimals are easier to you guys. So either one is fine. Now on B, it says find the surface area of the cylinder in terms of pi. So surface area is equal to, <clears throat> I'm going to use the 2 pi r times r plus h version of the equation. I know that r is equal to 5.5 .5 from this right here. I know that h is equal to 4, um, and that was given at, at the beginning. So now I can just plug things in. Now it says in terms of pi. So that means that surface area, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug these numbers in 2, um, and I'm going to move pi all the way to the back. 2 times 5.5. Uh, for r times 5.5 .5 plus 4. Oops, take a minute. I do that every time. Surface area is equal to 2 times 5.5 .5 times 5.5 .5 plus 4 times pi. And pi is in the back. Uh, so this is 2 times 5.5 .5 times 9.5. I want to add these together before I multiply times pi. And then I can put it in my calculator. 2 times 5.5 times 9.5 <coughs> gives me 104.5 pi. 
in its surface area, so that'd be inches squared. All right, and finally, the dreaded number 11. This is killing us. So, uh, a company makes a cylinder can for peaches. Each can, so let's draw the can, has a radius of four um, centimeters and a height of 12 centimeters. So they've got this can, and they want to make a bigger can. So they want to increase the can by 25%. So let's first, we have to figure out, uh, before we can do anything else, we need to figure out what the new volume is going to be. So to find out what the new volume is going to be, we need to find what the original volume is going to be. So volume is equal to pi r squared h. So <clears throat> volume will equal 3.14 times 4 squared times 12. So that's the original volume. Okay, 3.14 times 4 squared times 12. I get volume is equal to 602.88. Um, now, we want to increase that by 25%. So the easiest way to increase something by 25% is, is realizing what that means. That means we're going to, we want a new volume that is 125% of its original size. Increase by 25, if it's 100 originally, it needs to be 125. So to find that, we say 1.25, remember 125% is essentially 1.25. So we're going to do 1.25 times 602.88 and this will be our new volume. 1.25 times 602.88 gives me 753.6. That is our new volume. <coughs> so now we can move on to A and B. A, if we're going to increase the volume to 753.6, we, without changing the radius, meaning the radius will still be 4, what is our new height? So, we set it equal to the pi equation. Remember that's pi r squared h. Pi is 3.14. r is still 4, so 4 squared h is going to be new. So remember this is just a number. So I'm going to figure out what that is as a, as a number. So 3.14 times 4 times 4 is 50.24. So 753.6 is equal to 50.24 times the height. Alright, to finish this equation off I would divide by 50.24 Jeez. So 753.6 divided by 50.24 gives me h is equal to 15, and that is 15 centimeters. So basically, instead of being 12 here, instead of being 12 here, it'd be 15. So it'd be a lot taller, three inch, three centimeters taller. All right. B says do the same thing, but this time, so 753.6, pi is still 3.14, your r is going to change, so that's going to go back to r squared, and our original height is still going to remain the same. So again, I want to find basically what these two numbers are together, so I'm going to multiply those. <clears throat> So 3.14 times 12 gives me 37.68. So essentially this is 37.68 times r squared. I'm going to divide. And I get r squared is equal to 
753.6 divided by 37.68, 20. So since r squared is 20, the way to solve for r is to take the square root. r is equal to 20 to the power of 1 half, which is equal to 20 to the power of 1 half, 4.47. But we round to the nearest tenth, so that becomes 4.5. 4.5 centimeters. And that is number 11. So I hope that was worth your time. Um, and I hope I made a few things more clear than they were before. So anyways, have a great day. Just kidding. <laughs> That was a little much. Math. Have it. Have, bye.